Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs updated Photo AI to version 2.0. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Topaz Labs Photo AI. Now, Topaz claims that this is a major update to Photo AI. In today's video, I'm going to show you what's new and what's been changed with this version of the application. I'll allow you to decide for yourself whether or not it is a major update. Now you'll notice I have an image opened up into Lightroom. I'm going to be using Photo AI as a Lightroom plugin only because it's easier to show you a before after version of the image from within Lightroom. Photo AI of course works as a standalone app and it works as a plugin in Photoshop as well. Now the first image we're going to take a look at is this one. It was shot with an ISO of 12,800 and if I zoom in you can see that there is a considerable amount of noise. You look over at the right hand panel of Lightroom, you'll see all the little eyeballs are diminished, meaning I didn't do any editing on this image at all. So I'm sending the raw file as is into Photo AI from Lightroom Classic. To do that, go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, and then over and down to the bottom, Process with Topaz Photo AI. That will take this raw file and it will open it up directly into Photo AI. And when it does, you'll notice the first new feature is this little panel that rolls out that shows you what autopilot is doing. You can see it's right here in the top right. It's uh, loading the image, it detected the subject, it's detecting faces, there are no faces here, uh, detecting noise and blur and so on, and now it is actually applying what it found. All it deemed needed for this image was noise removed. Now this version of Photo AI has version two of remove noise. And to see that, just roll over, or hover over remove noise and you'll see a little triangle will appear. Click on that. And you can see that we have version two of raw normal and version two of raw strong. Autopilot for this image determined that raw normal version two was needed. I've sent around six or seven images into uh, this version of Photo AI and every single one of them have chosen either raw normal version 2 or raw strong version 2. None of the ones I've sent so far has chosen one of the older models. Now the default setting they use for raw normal 2 is strength of 55 and minor to blur of 27. I'm just going to leave those as is. Now there are a couple new features in Photo AI that are considered beta features. Uh, if you look towards the bottom you can see adjust lighting beta and balance color beta. I purposely chose this image because you may have noticed that it's a bit underexposed. So how will adjust lighting fix it? Let's try it out. We'll just turn on the power switch. When you do, again, it has to go through its routine again. It has to remove the noise and then it adjusts the lighting. And you can see that it's a bit too bright, isn't it? Let's zoom out so we can get a better look. We'll go down here to the bottom and go to fit view. Again, it has to re-render and it relit. Every image I tried this on, it seemed to make it too bright, at least too bright for my taste. And this one definitely is too bright for my taste. Now, you can adjust it. You could go over and hover over it like we did the remove noise section, and you get this little triangle. Roll it open. We have one single slider. Set it to 25. Let's just pull it down to, let's say, 20. Let it re-render. That's a little better. But what I found is this adjust lighting beta that's in this version of Photo AI seems to add too much exposure every single time. Now there is another beta feature, new feature, and it's called balance color. I'll turn it on in this image. This image didn't really seem to have a problem with color, but I think what you'll find, because I found this with every image I tried it on, that it just oversaturates the image and it tends to make it look bad. I also found an image that was a bit cool that it made it a bit too warm. And then I had an image that was a bit warm and it made it too cool. So it kind of is overstepping its bounds. It's not quite set the way it should be. So again, these are in beta, so hopefully they improve it. Now I'm going to, going to turn off balance color. Now we could roll that open real quick and you can see there's two sliders here, temperature and opacity. So I could tone it down by pulling down opacity if I felt I needed to. Um, but on this image, I'm just going to keep it off and we'll take the default setting that it used for remove noise. And again, that was 
raw normal version 2 with strength at 55 and minor D blur at 27. It didn't do anything else. I did adjust lighting. It had the setting at 25 and I pulled it down to 20. So we're going to keep that and I'm going to save it to Adobe Lightroom Classic and it's prompting me to save it. Now, this is the other issue I found. When you use that relighting tool, um, what happens is it seems when you use it as a Lightroom plugin that it totally ignores what you did. Um, you probably saw a brief glimpse of it. You can see how it is way too bright. It does this every single time. Now, again, these this is in beta, so take it you know, with that grain of salt. Um, I'm sure it will get fixed and improved in future releases of the application, but right now, I don't think this relighting and the color beta features of this version 2.0 of Photo AI are ready for prime time. That's my opinion. Now, I can come in, of course, go to the basic tab, and I could try to pull exposure down. They pull highlights down. So I could start to edit it. I mean, it doesn't really hurt your edit too much. Uh, it just gives you a little more work to do. So I don't think that's ready. Now, they've also introduced version two of the Sharpen model, two different version sharp or Sharpen version models. And let's talk about that for a moment. We're going to work on this image. You can see that it is quite blurry. And what I did was... Before I started this video, I have this image that I used the original Sharpen model that I used on. So we're going to compare this new Sharpen version 2 versus this old Sharpen that was in previous versions of Photo AI. So we're going to go back to the RAW file. And again, these are bo oh, both Nikon RAW files. The previous image was taken on a Nikon D500. This image was taken on a Nikon D7000. So this is an older image. So... Uh, ISO 400, so not really a lot of noise. Let's send this over there, though. Again, it's an unedited RAW file. And you, you may be wondering, well, what if you do edits on it? Well, if you do edits on it and send it over to Photo AI, Photo AI ignores the edits. And to kind of prove that, let's just do a quick crop on it. All right, so we'll do a significant crop on this image. So we did an edit. Now let's send it over to Photo AI. We'll go to File, down to Plugin Extras, and then over and down to the very bottom, Process with Topaz Photo AI. And again, we get this autopilot kind of panel that rolls out, letting us know what autopilot is doing. Then once autopilot determines what is needed on this image, it will then apply what it found it needed. Now it's done, kind of, sharpening. So it's still sharpening, let it do its thing. Now it's done. All right, now it's sharpened, all right? And it did remove noise. Let's roll that open. It used raw normal version two pre like the previous image did. I'll, I won't change anything there. We'll let that stay the same. Let's open up the sharpening models. You can see that there's standard strong lens blur, motion blur. Those were in previous versions, but what is new is standard version two. And it didn't think that this image would benefit from using standard version two. It used standard. Let's try standard version two. I'll click on it and let it render. And I've never touched any of the controls for standard version two. Uh, it's showing strength 85 and minor denoise at 14. I'm not going to touch this. I'm going to leave those alone. So I'm not going to do anything uh, there. We'll close that up. Now, of course, there's no faces detected because there isn't a person in the shot. If you had graphics in here, it would you'd have the option to preserve the text. That hasn't changed, and you could do that as well. We have the adjust lighting in the balance color. I'm not going to do anything with those, and we're going to save this. Now, remember, I did a crop on this. So I'm curious, or you may be curious, so what it's going to do with that crop. Well, as I mentioned, it ignores it. It's just going to bring you, give you a DNG file, uh, which is still a raw file. But as you can see, it ignored the crop. And again, it kind of does that. You know. So, um... Okay, so here is the original RAW file. I'll hit the I key. There's the .nef, so that's the original Nikon RAW file. I'm going to reset it so we get rid of the crop so we could better AB it. Now here is version 2, the one that I just did. All right, here's version 2, and here's the one that I did before I started the video with version 1. You could see right away, without even zooming in, that it looks considerably different, the sharpened models. Let's go up to View, and let's lock the zoom position. Go back to that original RAW file and let's zoom in on the bird's eye. Very blurry. 
unacceptable, really. Let's go to version one. This is the original Sharpen AI model. Let's just zoom out just a little bit. Um, let's do this. Let's hold in the command key and just draw like that. So we're zoomed out a little more. Okay, so this is version one of the Sharpen model that was available in previous versions of Photo AI. Here's version two. You can see that it, at first glance, it may not look as sharp, but it's actually better in my opinion. If I go back to that original version, you'll notice that this one is much more patchy. Like it's sharp here, it's kind of sharp there, it's blurry here, it's blurry up in here. But if we go to version two, although it doesn't look as sharp in parts, it's more uniformly sharp. So this one's easier to work with after you're done in Photo AI. I could go to the Detail tab and I could sharpen it and the sharpening looks better because it's not over sharpening parts of the image. Like if I went to this one where it's real sharp in here and real sharp in here and here. If I try to sharpen those other parts, it, it is overly sharpened then in those, in those parts that were sharpened by Photo AI. Now, of course, you could use masking and use a brush and just selectively sharpen the parts that are blurry if you wanted to do it that way, but that's a little more work. Um, it definitely would work though. But I think that version two is, at least on this image, uh, better. It's just better. It's just more uniformly sharp and not patchy sharp like the previous version. Hopefully that made sense. So I could come in here and I could use masking and use a subject mask on this and then go down to the detail tab and just sharpen it here and then add some uh, texture maybe. And you can see how it just looks better. It's just uniformly sharp everywhere as opposed to if I did it with this, this one, this previous version, which is patchy sharp. That's version two, here's version one, which is patchy sharp. I could click on it, there we go. Now if I go here and I choose subject and I add texture to it, it starts to get over sharpened in here and in here. If I go to the detail tab and I add sharpening. And of course, I'm just overdoing it. I'm just moving these sliders like crazy. I wouldn't really do that, but I'm just trying to give you a good visual of what I'm talking about. And this is more what, as I recall, this bird looked like. It didn't look like this high contrast area in here and it didn't look that way. It looked kind of smooth, more uniform like this. So I think this is a better sharpening version, at least on this image. So for um, version two of Photo AI, on this image, I think the new sharpening model works better than the previous sharpening model. For the record, the new uh, no denoise or noise removal uh, models, I don't see much difference in those um, between the previous version. So uh, that seems to be not as... Um, noticeable at least. So that's it. That's what's new and exciting in this latest version of Topaz Labs Photo AI. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. You can see everything that's new in this version of the application. They also have new camera and lens support as well, and that will all be on that web page that will be linked in the description below this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.